Well, this year when uh, the new Mission Ballistic came out and I got my hands on one of them, what an awesome piece of equipment. I started shooting it and getting it tuned in, and it didn't take much to tune the thing in. And uh, after a couple hundred rounds out of the bow, I mean, I was very confident in that bow and being able to place the arrow where it belongs. And uh, to have that kind of confidence going into the field, that's awesome. Well, I live on the border of Wisconsin and Iowa, and I love hunting Wisconsin. I have observation points during the season. I, I actually do more scouting than I do hunting, but once I know the critters are in there and I know their pattern, I'll get in there and try and take them out. And that's exactly what happened on this hunt in Wisconsin. I watched these bucks chasing the does around a little bit. So the rut's just starting, October the 24th. They're bedding right in the edge of this power line pole line, right in the tall grass. So what I want to do is set up just inside the woods next to the power line pole right on that pinch point. To know that there's giants here and we're going in there and especially to have a bow in your hand. I mean, there ain't nothing like it. Well, this was not going to be an easy spot to get into, and there was going to be nothing easy about climbing up the backside of that hill with the tree stands. And then I told just the uh, cameraman, hey, uh, we're going to have to get in there and be really quiet and hang them stands without getting caught. And I'll tell you, there's only one guy I witnessed do that, and that was Nathan Jones. He hung them stands within 100 yards of them deer, and we climbed in, and they were still laying there. We had to do the same thing. And you know, we got up there, we were wringing wet with sweat. <laughs> we changed our clothes, we got into a tree that I figured was going to work for us. And sure enough, I put the pegs in the tree, but I was only able to hang one stand. And then there's a giant limb that I was going to stand on, but with my hunter safety vest, I was okay. And Justin sat in the, in the tree stand right in the golden chair. We weren't there five minutes, Justin, taps me on the shoulder and he says, look, I see a pair of ears in the grass. And I thought, oh man, <laughs> we did it. That deer was within 100 yards of us laying in the grass. We did not get caught. What a sense of accomplishment. And then I'll tell you what, every emotion that can go through a bull hunter went right through me when I saw that giant standing behind that doe. Unbelievable experience. I couldn't believe what was happening. The doe starts moving toward me. And right behind her is this giant. And I had everything emotionally to keep my head straight because it's possible that this is gonna happen, that that giant is gonna walk right behind that doe and I'm gonna get the opportunity. What happened? I couldn't believe it. I, I could not believe it. Now, I've heard of bucks rubbing on poles and tearing them up. This buck walks up to the telephone pole and starts rubbing his antlers all over that pole and tearing it up. That shook me up. I had to get a grip on myself. This is really happening. And uh, then, he, then he starts pawing the ground and, and making a scrape right there with the telephone pole. To keep your head straight with something like that going on it was just about impossible. And uh, it took forever, I mean just forever for that doe to come across the front of us and then he finally started moving and he was watching her and just taking his time and just uh, kind of skirting the outside of her and just keeping an eye on her is all he was doing. I'm sitting there just trying to keep myself calm. You know, as this buck came forward, he turned at, and started coming into me a little bit. And there he did it again. He comes up and he pees on his hocks and makes another scrape on the ground. And, and I ranged him at 45 yards. 
and uh, I'm very comfortable at taking a shot like that. And I was getting ready for the shot, and what does he do? He turns and starts coming toward me again. So I had enough sense to grab my rangefinder and keep clicking him. In my mind, I said to myself, uh, what are you waiting for? <laughs> and I mean, this is it. Oh, I got him. <laughs> I'm ordered. Thank you, Jesus. What a buck. He was rubbing it all up. Oh. 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 Pays to practice. I mean, it just pays to practice. I had all the confidence in the world. Brought that up, squeezed it off, whap, it was right there, perfect. The bull was so quiet. The arrow was through him before he even knew what happened. <laughs> I came unglued. I went ballistic. <laughs> Peach. <laughs> you want to talk about having a nerve rattle out of you? Watch your buck you want to shoot. Walk up and start breaking a telephone pole. To know that I made the shot, I still am a little skeptic until I walk up and put my hands on that animal. There's so many things that could have gone wrong and gone backwards before that shot was taken and never had the opportunity on the shot, but be able to make the right shot, harvest that animal, that was beyond dreams. Look at that buck. Oh, what a dandy. What a dandy. Matthews has got their new bowl lines out in Mission, and they are everything as good as any high-end bow on the market. To trust the bow, drop a booner. <laughs> My bow is mission.